So we're here at the new farm and I'm currently organising um, the setup of this place and we have a slight problem. The automation at my other farm, which was still operating from, has broken. Now I was out there last night trying to diagnose the problem and it turns out that the, the switch which I use, I like a wee automate, automation switch which are quite common. I don't know if I've got another one lying around. Here, one of these. So it's one of these switches here has appeared to have stopped working. Um, now I know these switches do have troubles with the Home Assistant software and what I think has happened is an update has been pushed out to the switch automatically and it's caused it to uh, disengage from the network and I can't get it back on, I can't get them talking. So what that means is that that cannot switch my humidification on and off. So humidity is not working. It's working if I turn it on full duty but then we over humidify and that causes problems and if I turn it off we under humidify and that causes problems. So I'm setting up my backup or a backup which I've got here. This is an old PID control box I made for um, CO2 control and I've got a sp spear via Sala probe here. We'll get that going with some um, proper um, signal cable. So this is a good signal cable for 20 milliamp. So we'll get that set up here. We'll show you, show you just as how it works and we'll get this running at the other place and we'll actually strip that automation box right off the wall because I've got nothing left at that other place apart from the farm. So it's pointless having automation. I can't use my computer to check it or any of that crap. So we're just going to get that running on bare bones. So this is what we're going to be using here. This is an Omron E5CC um, PID controller. Get that to focus. These cameras don't like focusing. So that'll do the controlling there. This is my Viasala backup probe, which I'll be using in a new farm here. It's very similar to the other one I've got. Um, let's see how close we can focus that. These are really good probes. So basically, we have the power. Power goes into the wall. Power goes into the wall. A data cable goes from here to the probe, which detects the correct humidity levels. And this here controls the output and you plug your humidifier into that there and this will cycle it on and off to keep the humidity range um, at that range we want. So all I need to do is I'm going to replace this old crap. This is some speaker cable I was using is what I had at the time for my um, CO2 sensor but this doesn't actually work that well. It's getting heaps of interference and I think that's um, you can see even running past the power cable here it actually interferes. That power cable will cause the amp, the voltage to to spike up and down and was getting a really poor signal. So we've got proper shield, a twisted pier cable um, and the shield's used to keep that um, voltage interference um, or amp interference away when they run near power cables. And we'll get this connected to that there. No, we good, we good. So that's the relay in there, it's a solid state relay, it should ideally be on a DIN rail, these are just the screws that held it to the wall, that's how it's wired up there, it's a bit of a jumbled mess, but it works fine. Now what we're going to do, that's the control, PID control there. The problem I've got is half of my stuff is back at the other farm and half of it's here. I'm trying to work between the two, so I don't quite have everything in one spot. So get rid of that line. So this is what the cable looks like here. We've got three twisted pair, so these are all for signal lines. So this here has a uh, temperature and humidity detection in it. So we can use a twisted pair for temperature and one for humidity and there's one spear. This is the, the wire I believe that you use to ground and this is the shielding which shields um, any um, interference from other voltages or currents running um, nearby on the outside of this. So that one's earth, that one's through the, runs through the outside and then that protects the inside from interference. Okay so it's all connected. Um, you can see I've run the data cable out here and straight into my sensor here. Um, in here it's a bit of a mess. I've actually had to put in a 12 volt power supply because these data loops, a 4 to 20 million data loop actually needs to run its data through its power supply. The power supply feeds in 
and then a negative comes out, feeds into the PID, and that's how it creates the, um, the 4 to 20 milliamp loop. Um, so we'll get this turned on. I'm pretty sure I need to, there it is there, I need to set this up for a 4 to 20 milliamp. I think it's set on 0 to 12 volts. Sorry, 0 to 10 volt signal input. So I need to change the signal input, which means I need to Google the manual for an Omron E5 CC controller. These manuals are real big things to read. They're like a, deciphering the Bible. Um, so I'll do that now, and we'll see if we can get that changed over and get this probe here working. So here it is here up and working. I had to change the direction of the PID because you can have them um, above point, above set point or below set point. So the current set value is 60 and it's reading 65% humidity. So we're over that set point of 60, so it's not turned on. If I change the set point, it will turn on. Now you can see I've got a fan connected to it just for the proof of concept. I will connect a humidifier to that because that is a humidity probe there. So I'll change this up to 70 and I'll turn it on and you'll watch this fan kick on. So in my fruiting room that's going to be the humidifier. When the humidity drops below a set point it's going to turn it on. You can see now it's below 66% it's humidity which is below 70 so it's turned that on. In the future, I'm switching to an Omnitech C40 controller, which is this device here. Now this has 40 points in it, 40 input outputs. So this has two outputs on it, temperature and humidity, which we can, grow, we can control through output one and two. Those two readings can control, let's say, a heater and a humidifier at three and four. And this is all programmed via our interface, um, which is really, really intuitive, really good. And it has complete PID functions. Um, anything else and you can select an individual input 4 to 20 or 10 volt input for these you can also select what output they want so it can control a 0 to 10 um, voltage output and control fan speed you've got a whole range of things you can do so the whole farm is going to be controlled through that so we're here at the old farm and what we're going to do is get this off the wall this is uh, my humidity controller which was controlling this plug here which doesn't work anymore so this is going to come down, this probe won't be getting used and we'll put our one we've just made in its place and um, I'm not quite sure where I'll put that probe in there, I'll probably just stick it somewhere on the edge because this room isn't going to be functioning for much longer we just need to get it through a few more weeks but I want those weeks, I want it to be working properly during those few weeks so the old one's off and I'm just going to get this new one basically right here in the middle um, oh my god so it's up here now we just need to plug it in. And that's on, and that's reading at, at the, this probe here. So it's seventy-seven percent humidity right now. It has been raining this morning, so that sounds about right. Um, we're going to put this in the room. I'm probably just going to run the cable again. I'm not going to hard mount this through the wall. I'm just going to literally carry this in and put it in a good spot in the room. Let's watch that go up. I'm guessing it's going to be quite humid in there. 89, 90, 91. Let's get you zoomed in on this a bit. Watch this go up. 93, 95. Very humid in there right now. Very, very humid. Now we're going to turn that down. No, I'm not going to turn that down. I'm going to leave that at. Go on to say 87. Oh, look at that. Look at that humidity. Nearly 100% humidity in there. Do that. So, very, very humid in there right now. And that's because I haven't been able to control it. I've just been able to manually turn my thing on and off, on and off. And I've actually over humidified. So, this is why I've done this this morning. So, it's sitting at 100% humidity in there. And that sounds about right. There's actually a little bit of flooding which has come out under the edges here. That's because I lost controlling of the room for a number of days now. And I've tried to, we've been moving house, moving facility, there's been a whole lot going on. Both, both my children have been sick, um, so I'm just getting onto it now. And I have actually over humidified the room. 
the, the humidity here in the city I live in can fluctuate quite rapidly. We're in winter now, but you still get quite dry winter days. Um, I've turned the fan on 100% duty cycle, trying to suck out a lot of that uh, moisture which is in there. Um, we'll get that out and we'll try and just bump this humidity down because 100% humidity is just too high. The mushrooms don't actually like it very much. Um, when they're pinning, it's really great when they're pinning, right? They make really, really cracker pin sets. Um, but as soon as the mushroom starts developing, you actually get uh, the cap doesn't develop properly if you get a lot of moisture, especially condensing on the outside of the cap. So we'll try and bump that down. I've set it to 87.